Welcome to this wonderful platform. If it is your first time of stopping by or coming across this channel for the first time, you are welcome. Please, if you like what you see here, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell. It's very, very important because it's going to help you to know when I upload a new video. In this channel, I present to you news on daily basis on what is happening in the whole world, especially in Nigeria and in Biafra land. Yes, Abmada Biafra. I bring to you Biafra news. So before I do that, what I always do is that I analyze it and I sit down there to watch the video together with you. Then we'll come to the comment section to talk about it. Of course, everybody is entitled to his or her opinion. That is why the comment section is there for you to contribute, leave your ideas, your thoughts, your belief about the videos that you have watched. Please, as we are doing this, let us do it constructively. As we we'll hop into today's video, remain blessed. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate your massive support in this channel. As we we'll watch. He jumped bail, though he was arrested in 2015. But according to him, he fled because of his life. Well, my reaction is the same with that of most Nigerians who feel that um, Nandekano um, receiving the short end of the knife from the federal government. Recall that he was arrested in 2015 and then for kept in, in custody for two good years without trial, over and against all provisions of the law, over and against all pronouncements of court, that he should be either taken to court or be released on bail. But the federal government refused, neglected and denied to grant him his constitutionally guaranteed right. And then even when he was eventually taken to court, the same federal government, through the instrumentalities of coercion, sent the military to ransack his community and threaten his life in the process. Many people lost their lives. It is mm. not hidden. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in the course of this struggle, Namdekano has lost both parents, and um, even though not killed directly by the federal government, but the trauma of his ordeal may have led to the death of you his parents. So? Of the trauma of his ordeal. He said so himself. I don't think so. He said so himself. Right. And uh, a man was on bail, and then he was ready and was going to court. And all of a sudden, the soldiers swooped onto him, and then, of course, it is only a tree that will hear that is about, it is about to be cut down and remain standing at that spot. So every it was right being, for him to jump bail. Every human being, every animal, not just a human being, that feels threatened by any way, in any manner, will likely shift ground. So, if Nigeria begin to look at the narrative of jumping bail, that would be unfair to Namdekano. The narrative really? is that, yes, very unfair. Why the so? narrative is that he was, his life was threatened. Obviously threatened. And he had to run away. Which is a national stimulus Do you of, think of every human being and of every animal. The, the Even if you have a goat at your backyard and you approach the goat with food in one hand and with stick on the other hand, the goat will reject your food. Don't you think that while he was in custody, his life could also have been threatened if that is what government was trying to do? Why did you not ask the soldiers what they went to do in his house? Right. That should be the right question. What did the soldiers go to do in his house? In the process, people lost their lives. What did they go there to do? At that point, what did he do? But even if he, had committed, even if he had committed any offense in the input, in the eye of the law, or right. in, the, in, the, in the opinion of the government, what did the soldiers go to Nam the Colonel's house to do? Wasn't he when, being investigated when he was, at the When time? he was enjoying the bail, granted him uh, by the court after two years of unlawful incarceration? These are the critical questions. Because I like to analyze issues based on cause and effect. Right. What was the cause? And what happened to be the effect? The cause is that the federal government acted very unlawfully. The cause is that the soldiers went to his house unlawfully. The cause is that his life was threatened. And the effect is that he had to run away, which is the natural stimulus of every animal, not just every individual. Let's get Jide Ologun's reaction to the statement uh, that you have made. He said government acted unlawfully and it was the effect of that that made Nam Dikanu jump bail. Nam Dikanu himself mentioned the fact that he his could have been killed mm. with the others who were killed in his residence when the military came invading. And that may be a valid argument. But the issue now is that he has been rearrested. Mm. Uh, he was going through trial. 
And if you look at the Constitution of Nigeria, Section 36, Section 5 in particular, 1999 as amended, he is entitled to what we call presumption of innocence. There are allegations against him of mm. instigating terrorism, you know, right. yeah, different charges. And unless <coughs> these allegations are proved beyond all reasonable doubt in the criminal justice value chain, he may not be convicted. So it's now for the government. But my concern really and my fear is that with recent developments in the country, for example, the high level of insecurity, wanton destructions in the southeastern part of the country, that he is allegedly instigating even from abroad. It may be a tough one. But, you know, my concern goes beyond this rearrest of Nam Dekano. Mm. What are the issues in the country? Nam Dekano himself was born, I think, September 25, 1967. And that was when the civil war mm. started that lasted for about three years claiming millions of lives in Nigeria and the issues that prompted this we are yet to resolve in Nigeria and like the northern coalition group is saying that this Namdekanu issue may not disappear with the rearrest can we look in the direction of referendum and right now in the country it's not just about Biafra other regions of the country are agitating. And what are these agitations focusing on? The engagement of the commonwealth of this country for the common good of this country. Mm. And unless we address this, we'll be arresting and rearresting and, you know, stampeding. That's on one side. On the other side, I think this has uh, punctuated or rather confirmed the capacity we talk about of the government to act if they want to act. I right. have mentioned it when it was time to get Nam Dekanu to prescribe IPOP, they acted. When it was time to get him, you know, to make him run away, they acted. Can we, you know, divert this attention to the bandits, the unknown gunmen, and Absolutely. solve the crisis in this land? And finally, I want to advise this morning that the government should please look in the direction of public relations. The definition of public relations means that, you know, a, a planned... Uh, deliberate and sustained efforts to create and sustain mutual understanding between an organization or a country and the publics. So can we come together as a nation, address our issues, rather than all these confrontations that are keeping us in poverty and not allowing us to register our presence in the polity of developed countries? Right, there's something he mentioned uh, that I'd like for you to react to. He said that uh, the agitations, though Namdi Kanu may, be, uh, may have been rearrested, but that the issues and the agitations, what he's championing, may not go to rest. And the question on the minds of a lot of people is with the agitations we have seen in the Southeast, would his rearrest actually fuel what we have been seeing in the Southeast? Well, his rearrest will not just fuel it. What will fuel more agitation is if he's not given fair trial. Mm. If the people perceive persecution instead of diligent, lawful prosecution and fair trial, then there will likely to be some backlash. My brother and friend Ajide mentioned the issue of referendum. And the question is, why is Nigeria of today shying away from that much-needed referendum? Mm. On 11 February 1961, there was a referendum to determine the, the life of the British Cameroon. And in that referendum, the Northern British Cameroon decided to go to Nigeria, and the Southern British Cameroon decided to go to Cameroon. A lot of um, issues about religion and rest played out. On 10th August 1963, Nigeria, this Nigeria that we have today, went into a referendum to determine the life of the old Midwestern region. And it was carved out from the then Western region through a referendum. In Catalan area, region of Spain, there was a referendum on whether they were going to remain or not. Mm. In Kurdish region of Turkey, of, um, uh, of Iraq, sorry, 
there was, there was a referendum in Britain of late there was a referendum whether they are going to remain with EU or whether they are going to go out of EU Absolutely. so what the agitation that man the Kano is championing is a civil agitation which the federal government has given the tent of criminality um, it's uh, embarrassing that government will uh, do the normal Nigerian approach where a man and another man has issues with their land they are trusting for land the other man wants to bring in the police he says there is threat to his life that he tried to kill him and all that meanwhile none of those things existed otherwise what has not the Kano done as a person that will warrant the charges of treason that will warrant the charges of money laundering that will warrant the charges those high ranking charges with my of course government knows that they have to prove beyond all reasonable doubt. Absolutely. And it is the lack of that proof that has made government in the first instance to keep the can unlawfully in detention for two good years. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. And then even when he has now started going through his trial, government could not have the patience to wait for the law to take its course and they stampeded him out of the country. Who is now the culprit in the matter between Nam the Kano and federal government? Mm. I mean, these are let's look at issues the way they are, and not just being sentimental about oh, he's uh, insulting anybody. When has insult become a crime? Right. It is a law of thought. It is a torturous offense of which, if you feel insulted, when the, um, uh, uh, America was going for election, somebody made an image of Donald Trump. A naked image of Donald Trump with a small ball and kept it in a massive square. Did you not see it? Had Donald Trump killed him? The problem we have today is that we are not operating democracy. What we have is a civilian rule managed by military hands. And those tenets of democracy are lacking in Nigeria. Otherwise, why would federal government be so sensuous about issues of criticism and issues of civil agitation? What is wrong with that? If we go by way of referendum, if government, the same government is saying that the Kano has so many followers, mm. does that not tell you something? If he is alone, would he have such followers? If the government now claims that the followers are essentially illiterate, conduct a referendum and say, let only those with school cert. Of course, you know that to be a president in Nigeria, you need only school certificate. Right. To be a senator, a governor, only school certificate. Conduct a referendum and place a benchmark that only those with school certificates would, conduct, would uh, vote in that referendum. And let us see whether Nam the Kano is alone or not. Okay. Government is shying away from the truth and government is hiding from its shadows. Now... Let's get your reaction to this again, uh, Ajidi, mm. because um, he mentioned some things, uh, talking about referendum and talking about fair trial and perhaps uh, persecution, as he uh, mentioned. And I'm wondering, in the context of fair trial, what will that be? In the, con uh, in the context of uh, persecution, what will that be? So perhaps you could just help us throw light to it before we come to the issue of why we are seemingly finding it difficult to have the referendum that he is, you know, talking about. Basically, the state will be prosecuting, and in the criminal justice value chain, you need thorough investigation, diligent prosecution, and a committed judiciary. But right now, there is a deep-rooted mutual distrust in the country. So you see people even looking at the tribe of the judge that is handling the case, the body language of the government, making different kinds of, 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 of you know, uh, comments. But having said that, this same government promised towards 2015 election to shift the burden of proof from the state to the accused mm. in criminal uh, uh, prosecution. That has not been done. And he has a team of lawyers who will defend him. Having said that, I have hinted that the present crisis in the southeastern parts of the country may, prompt, may be prompted like uh, trying to uh, call the card a bad name, to hang it. And again, I want to emphasize an issue that what we are experiencing today has a history. Mm -hmm. I doubt if any of the present leaders of Nigeria was there to sign the 1914 amalgamation. Mm. What led to the May 1953 Kano riots? 
are still the issues we are debating today. Mm. What led to the civil war of 1970-1970? There are issues we are debating. Now, let me connect this to even the present trajectory. You know, Namdi Khan is a British citizen. Allegedly, he moved from Britain to uh, Singapore and to Zek, where he was allegedly uh, rearrested and brought back to Nigeria. Now, Britain has exited Europe through Brexit by choice. They debated it. In fact, the prime minister then, because his position did not fly, resigned from office. All right, allowing the people to take a decision. Mm. Having said that, Singapore left Malaysia in 1965. And today, by virtue of resourceful leadership, it's one of the best countries to live and work in the world. Is this relationship working? If we must remain united, can we have what is enshrined in Section 17 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended that says that a platform for our coexistence will be based on justice, you know, fairness, and freedom? Mm. If we cannot guarantee this, and if, again, we want to even focus on the primary purpose of government as enshrined in section 14 subsection 2 of the nigerian constitution 1999 as amended that says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose, purpose of, of government. government and people of nigeria citizens can call for security call for welfare if they appear not to be enjoying it from the government that should be providing so why don't we go back to the basics because the chinese say that you cannot carve a rotten wood it appears right now that the project Nigeria we are trying to present and project and protect may be a rotten wood. Can we have a wood that can be carved? Can we work together so that we can enjoy the blessings of this nation? Like I said earlier, how can we engage the commonwealth of Nigeria for the common good of Nigerians? And I think that is the concern we have now, not just in the southeastern part of the country. Now we have the, the southwestern people also. Agitated. We now have the Amotekun everywhere, even in the north. I just mentioned it now. The northern coalition are the ones saying, this issue of Nam Dekan will not go away. That Can we have a referendum? And basically, democracy started in Athens in Greece. It is the government of the people, by the people, and for, for the, the people. people. You don't forcefully lead a people. And the essence of being a nation is to enjoy the fortunes of that nation. So I want the government to go beyond this and look at the big picture rather than dealing with symptoms. And having put all this together, uh, we constitutionally is entitled to very you know, fair trial and diligent prosecution. And I have said it. That is if the trust capital is there for the government. And my big question this morning is that, looking at the antecedents we have experienced in Nigeria of late, is the trust capital there to assure us that there will be justice at the end of the that, day? That's the question I'll, I'll be throwing to you. Is that trust, trust capital there to assure the people of a fair trial? I, I want to be optimistic, um, except government doesn't want to be sensitive. I want to be, op op be optimistic that government should. I use the word government, yes, mm -hmm. advisedly, yeah, because um, we, we know what, what, what we're talking about. That government should ensure that Namdekano gets fair trial. A leader of a movement that is idealistic, a movement that is based on, on, on consciousness and not on physical realm, right a movement that is based and that is etched an opinion a phenomenon that is etched in the mind and the psyche of the people anybody who is that leader must be handled very carefully now the Kano has said it and um, we all say it that he has lost virtually everything in this movement not just that he has lost his his parents he has no property anywhere he has challenged anybody if you see him own property anywhere in the world you can go ahead and see that property that this is a cause that he wants to fight for. And the people that he is fighting for feel he is doing it well. And they want to sustain the tempo. They want to sustain the agitation. Forget the fact that some elite who want to play the ostrich. I can tell you for free, Veronica, that nobody is enjoying the level of injustice, massive inequity, level of unfairness that is going on in Nigeria. Because such level of injustice, inequity, and unfairness 
has held Nigeria down, has not allowed the people to exhibit and fulfill their God-given potentials and talent mm -hmm. to the extent that even the huge resources that we have, both human and material, in this country are not adequately harnessed. Life in Nigeria has become Herculean, and nobody is enjoying it. People are now saying, what is the way out? In every suggestion from both the elite, from the masses, from everybody, the solution is, let there be fairness and equity. Let us negotiate uh, the basic essence of our existence. Because this was foisted on us. Mm. And as human beings, we should be able to determine. Two cannot walk unless they, are, they agree. Except they agree. There is no agreement in Nigeria. Nigeria is cracking. So why don't we, as intelligent people that God has made us, come together and decide, how do we relate? The template is there. We've been talking about it. We say restructure Nigeria and allow everybody to unleash his or her energies. And or you, if you don't restructure but, but Nigeria, you know allow allow the country to grow on the paradigm of justice and equity. But will you will recall what the president's statement recently. He asked the question: What is it? What is there to restructure? What, what is it? What did he that see? The people want restructure. What did he see? And he also had said that yes. the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. Look, uh, Veronica, what did Mr. President see when he promised restructuring prior to 2015 election? Mm. Without that restructuring, do you think Nigerians would have elected him? Because he promised that. Nigerians elected him. So, let him ask that, answer that question. What did he see then? And then what is he not seeing today? And who is telling Mr. President that restructuring is equal to disunity? It is even lack of restructuring that will fan the embers of this unity as it is fanning today, that will terminate the life of this country as it is threatening to terminate. And that is why Nigeria is on a precipice. So anybody who wants to be honest to himself should know that this agitation cannot just die. This call cannot just cease because, one, the trust capital in Nigeria has, stand, has diminished so much mm. across all nations that make up this country. In, in, the, in, the, in the early 60s, Chief Obafe would describe Nigeria as a geographical expression. We expected that almost 50 years, more than 50 years down the line, that that expression would have become a nation. But instead of doing that, Nigeria decays by the decade. Every succeeding decade is worse in terms of development, in terms of unity, in terms of everything. So why can't we arrest this continuous decay, this geometrical decay that we are seeing? Are we going to wait until the country implodes? Mm. That naturally, religious people will say, God forbid. But God can only forbid when we as Nigerians forbid that Nigeria dies. If we don't, I can tell you that the tra trajectory we are taking, the direction we are going, does not ensure or guarantee the continued existence, success, and survival and development of this country. And the rest of the world must be interested in what is going on in Nigeria. Right. Yes, the, the news yesterday was that Ghana has launched a plant to build automobile. The big news in Nigeria yesterday was that Nandekano was arrested. Can you see the difference? Mm. Right. Now, he mentioned something, uh, Jide, that I'd like for you to react to. Uh, is He said the president before 2015 had promised to restructure. And what did he see then that he is not seeing now? And I'm asking, could that be the basis for the distrust, the trust the deficit that we are seeing today uh, expressing itself in various dimensions. Absolutely. <clears throat> in public relations, we talk about walking your talk. So if there were promises, you'll be evaluated on those promises. Mm -hmm. And recall that insecurity was an issue towards 2015 election, and the government were coming in promise to deal with insecurity, to fight corruption, and to work on the economy. And you will agree with me. Let's start from the economy angle that if the total indebtedness of Nigeria was about 12.12 .12 trillion naira in 2015, and today it's about 33.11 trillion naira, uh, you ask what we have done there. If the dollar rate today is 500 naira to a dollar, and it was about 190 in 2015, how well have we done? Mm -hmm. If today 
323 persons were killed in Kaduna in three months. 949 kidnapped in the same three months. Then we ask ourselves about insecurity. If today the Boko Haram that started in the northeastern part of the country, reportedly by the president himself, that the way they were handling the matter has pushed them to all parts of the country, you still want to benchmark uh, the security state of the country. So I think we have a chronic crisis in our hands and we must just decide that if we must unite it as declared in the word of god in psalms 133 psalms 133 says behold how beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity that god says he will release his blessings mm -hmm. let me say this nigeria has the largest deposit of proven gas in africa what have we benefited from it mm -hmm. professor konjo uh, is the DG of World Trade Organization. What have we benefited from it? Uh, Dr. Adeshino is the president of African Development Bank. What have we benefited? Mm -hmm. We have our own in the United Nations General Assembly, and all we talk about is insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. It's insecurity and industry. I just want to propose this morning, there are things you embark on to create a healthy nation. You build a civil society, not a militant society like we are doing. We are radicalizing the people of Nigeria against one another. You ignite and activate the economy to create wealth. Mm -hmm. You empower the private sector to support. Give us electricity. We have the, all the energy mix in Nigeria. Now, NNPC is telling us that they are drifting towards zero remittance to the Federation account. Is that a good news? You know how, how I think I, I, I heard this morning the billions of naira that are going to subsidizing electricity. Yes. Billions of naira that, I mean, about, uh, we, we are even buying into the Dangote refinery. And if you look at, if you read from section 15 to section 16 of Nigerian Constitution 1990, as amended, it has stipulated how the economy should be managed to have sustainable development. And finally, I want to recommend to this government, please, you owe yourself, if not Nigerians and the world, the mandate and responsibility to be recorded as putting Nigeria on the path of prosperity. We have no business with poverty in this country. Mm. And that is the truth. The gold deposit in Zamfara can end that said about $2 billion annually. What are we talking about? Right. Every part of this country is blessed. But how do we harness all this? That is the big question now. And I think that's the responsibility of the government. Absolutely. And if we cannot do it at the central level, can we restructure? What is restructuring? Go back to what we had in the early 60s. You have regional government, Southwest doing well, not doing well, and there was healthy competition to create wealth. Mm. And in the absence of wealth, we can only continue to travel in the direction of poverty. And someone said, no matter how fast okay. or okay. how far you have traveled in the wrong direction, you will end up in the wrong destination. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your final word. Well, um, the government has, uh, uh, has a stake. The whole world is watching. Mm. Nigerians are watching um, how they'll handle the issue of Nanda Kanu. And then beyond that, the world is watching how this government will handle other insecurity issues. Now, like my brother said, the government has proven that they have the capacity to arrest the insecurity situation in Nigeria. They have proven that. So all eyes are on them. Whatever they make with, uh, do with um, the opportunities that they have today, across my youtube channel you are welcome now that we have finished watching this video together you saw me sitting there watching it together with you i appreciate you let's go to the comment section to talk about it if it is your first time subscribe put on your notification bell that notification bell is very very important 